Just when I thought OptiFlex was fully finalized and finished, and I couldn't get this thing to go any faster, I was wrong. I have found another upgrade for OptiFlex, and that's what we'll be doing in today's video. What is up, everyone? My name is Ken, also known as Wiltshire, and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we will be upgrading my modified Dell Optiplex 7070 that was a 3040 that is now a 7070 known as Optiflex. I had an RTX 3060 Ti inside of this beast here and I didn't think I could go any faster than that or find a graphics card that I could fit inside this thing besides a 3060 Ti from Zotac. But boy was I wrong because I found a faster graphics card and it is actually smaller than the 3060 Ti. Let's get into a breakdown of what graphics card I decided to go with to upgrade OptiFlex from the 3060 Ti. So the one that you see on the top here is actually the modified graphics card with a modified heatsink or cooler attached to the graphics card. Now below that is the original stock cooler that was on this graphics card. And a lot of you probably already know what this guy is right here. And this is a stock cooler for an RTX A4000. So this card is actually originally a single slot card, which is really cool to see. It's just really, really long. As you can see, compared to the modified stock cooler, this graphics card wouldn't fit in OptiFlex. So that was the issue originally, was this card wouldn't fit. A Redditor actually came up with the idea of yanking off a pallet RTX 3060 cooler and slapping it on top of the RTX A4000 motherboard. There's a few things that we had to do for this A4000 in order to make it work. So for whatever reason, NVIDIA originally had this extension cable for the six pin PCI power adapter. It was soldered to the motherboard because on the edge of the graphics card for the stock cooler right here, that is where the power cable is. So we flip this guy over here. I have made my own custom back plate that kind of mimics the front. I tried to go with a gunmetal kind of brushed finish on this back plate. But this back plate was originally actually from a gigabyte 1060 six gig card that I got in payment for upgrading somebody's computer for them. I stole its back plate to put on the A4000 because the A4000 doesn't come with one. The way I did it was I actually used some stick on magnets from Lee Valley. Lee Valley is like a woodworking store and I'll leave a link to the, the magnets in the description below. But this is how I did it. I pretty much just super glued magnets onto the back and I put the self adhesive magnets on the graphics card here. So all you have to do is just go boop. One of the problems that I had with the graphics card and upgrading. So pretty much it's a drop on replacement for the stock cooler. The only problem is, is like I said, the power cable. So the original cable was soldered to these three solder joints up here, right here. And that makes things a little bit difficult uh, because <laughs> I couldn't get the, the heat sink on top of the uh, PCB without it bending because this kind of fin stack here actually would run into the cable and I almost pierced the cable actually trying to put this on. But as you can see, I have soldered an eight pin power cable to the PCB. And surprisingly enough, Nvidia actually left the traces right here. This is where I soldered it onto connected to this port here. So you can actually solder an eight pin power cable, which I was really surprised. It was kind of a, an experiment and I wasn't really sure it was gonna work, but to my surprise, it does indeed work. That is our fully modified RTX A4000. So I'm gonna do a bunch of testing and stuff like that for this graphics card. I actually swapped it over for a bunch of reasons, not only gaming, but I also do a lot of video editing on OptiFlex. And this guy really is meant to be used for video editing and CAD design and stuff like that and AI and so on and so forth. So this guy is a suitable replacement for the RTX 3060 Ti. So let's get into the testing for the RTX A4000 versus the 3060 Ti in gaming. So we're gonna start with 3D Mark's Firestrike with the 3060 Ti versus the A4000. So let's get into it. If we look at the old result of the RTX 3060 Ti inside of OptiFlex, you'll see that we get a overall fire strike score of 22,599. If we look at those results compared to the A4000, this is where things get quite interesting. So if we look at the A4000 score, we get a 22,662. So the A4000 managed to squeak that victory out Oh, ever so slightly. But again, this is where things get even more interesting. With the graphics score of the A4000 versus the 3060 Ti, the graphics score is 2,300 points higher on the A4000 than it is the 3060 Ti, with a score of 30,006. 
compared to the 3060 Ti's 27,648. So that is a big whopping difference of a graphics score compared to the two graphics cards. But again, things get more interesting because the physics score is lower on the A4000 versus the 3060 Ti by about 1400 points, which is rather interesting. So the A4000 scored 20,340 and the RTX 3060 Ti scored 21,713. And last but not least is the combined score between the two. So if we look at the A4000, it scored the combined score of 8,506, which is actually quite a lot lower than the 3060 Ti because the 3060 Ti again scored a 9,790. So there's a big difference between the combined score between 3060 Ti and the A4000. And I think this actually correlates with the other data that I collected on the benchmarks for some games. So the first game that we're going to go with is going to be Apex Legends. So looking at the comparison chart for Apex Legends running at 1440p on the low preset with model details set to medium. So the maximum FPS was unchanged. The game is capped at 145 FPS. As for the average FPS, the A4000 managed to squeak out again the tiniest victory over the 3060 Ti at 144 versus 140. And the minimum FPS, this is where things start to get a lot better for the A4000 compared to the 3060 Ti, where the A4000 outpaced the 3060 Ti with 121 versus 99. And looking at the 1% low, manages to squeak out yet another victory by 2 FPS. The A4000 got 95, 3060 Ti was 93. The 0.1% low, again, a little bit better than the 3060 Ti at 79 versus 74. Overall, the game ran a little bit better on the A4000 versus the 3060 Ti. And this is the game that I most care about because I put a ton of hours into Apex Legends. It is my go to game for a lot of uh, downtime that I get so uh, I play it a lot and this is the one that matters the most to me when I'm gaming so uh, I'm actually very happy with the results from Apex Legends so let's move on to the next game. Moving on to the next game which is going to be Doom 2016 running at 1440p ultra preset Vulcan API TSAA on and motion blur was off. The maximum FPS is unchanged the game is capped at 200 FPS so nothing has changed there. As for the average FPS the 3060 Ti squeaked out victory by one single FPS 199 versus 198 and the minimum FPS is where things start to get a little bit better for the 3060 Ti versus the A4000 in Doom where the 3060 Ti scored one 192 versus 184 for the A4000. The 1% low again shows the same thing, the RTX 3060 Ti outpacing the A4000, but this time by 10 FPS, 140 versus 130. And the 0.1% low was much better on the 3060 Ti versus the A4000 at 114 versus 87. So the 1% low is a little bit worse on the A4000. Overall, I'm still pretty happy with the performance of the A4000 and you'll see why in a moment. So moving on to the third game. The third game, as always, is going to be Rise of the Tomb Raider, 1440p, very high settings, SMAA on, and motion blur was turned off. So the maximum FPS actually got a lot better on the A4000 compared to the RTX 3060 Ti. The A4000 got 194 versus RTX 3060 Ti's 182. The average FPS was a little bit better on the A4000 by two FPS, 141 versus 139. The minimum FPS was, again, a little bit better on the A4000 at 94 versus 90. The 1% low was the same at 92 versus 85. And again, following the correlation, the 0.1% low was much better on the A4000 versus the 3060 Ti at 88 versus 65. So moving on to the last and final game, and that is going to be The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 was running at 1440p on the Ultra preset with SMAA on and motion blur was turned off. And this is where the RTX A4000 continues its dominance over the RTX 3060 Ti with the maximum FPS on the A4000 being 113 versus 98. The average FPS was 98 versus 86. The minimum FPS was 83 versus 76. The 1% low was 82 versus 73 and the 0.1% low was 77 versus 69. So what did you guys think of the 3060 Ti? Are you team 3060 Ti or are you team RTX A4000? If I haven't made it obvious enough, I am absolutely positively team RTX A4000. And the reason why that is, is because this thing trades blows with the 3060 Ti for half the amount of power draw. Half, I can't emphasize that anymore. And this thing even beats the 3060 Ti in some applications like Apex and my general performance inside of Premiere Pro because this thing has a video editing mode in the NVIDIA control panel. Speaking of Premiere, the reason why 
I like this graphics card more for editing is because of the amount of VRAM. The amount of VRAM on this guy is 16 gigabytes compared to the 3060 Ti's eight. I need that VRAM when it comes to doing effects, transitions, color correction on Premiere because it starts eating that up quite quickly when you have a lot of video tracks on your timeline. So that is a big plus for me because I use Optiflex for editing all of my videos. Regardless, I'm super happy with this modification. I'm curious to see if you guys have different opinions for this card in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of this card in the comment section below. Are you 3060 Ti or are you gonna go with the A4000 like I did? It's just a super cool card. I'm very happy that I managed to get this mod and I'm curious to see what you guys think. Anyway, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thanks so much for watching this video. My name's Ken, also known as Wiltshire, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.